ബിസ്മില്ലാഹിമൻഷുറൂറിഅംഫുസീനാസ്യാത്തിയാമാലീനാ أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam As we pass through the different stages and the different states of our life in this world i want to share three things that if we implement them we will be from the awliya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be from the friends of allah bi idnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala we will live a life which is fulfilling and bi idnillah we will attain the success in the akhirah the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his jannah these three things that we're going to reflect upon today they cover every single situation that we are going to find ourselves in and that is that when the slave he has a blessing that he shows gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number 1 when he is blessed with something he does shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second is that when he is tested with something then he is patient or she is patient and the third is that when the slave sins then the slave turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance these three states and these three golden principles they will cover every single situation that you my brother or you my sister will find yourself in so the first of them that when the slave he has some blessing shukr he gives shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this state of shukr and giving thanks to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and sisters is something that many of us we don't do when we wake up in the morning we don't say the dua even the dua for waking up in the morning it starts alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana the praise and the thanks are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who gave us life after he gave us death and to him is the return and to him is the subhanallah that when the slave wakes up in the morning and his eyes open and he sees the first thing he does in the morning is shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning of the day I start the day with the thanks and the praise of Allah Jalla wa Ala who has given me life again after he caused me to go to sleep when sleep is the cousin of death. Shukr my dear brothers and sisters is that golden recipe which if you have a blessing and then you do shukr to Allah and you give thanks to Allah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will increase that blessing for you. perhaps when we in our lives we have a blessing and that blessing is removed maybe one of the reasons is because we weren't grateful and we didn't give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on this point of giving shukr we have so much to give thanks and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 
We only have to look at what's happening at our brothers or to our brothers and sisters in the Muslim lands. We only have to see the pictures and the videos that come out. On the most fundamental level, they have so much less than us. And yet, ironically, they perhaps are more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the little that they do have. And we must, in our days, we must mention that from gratitude is the, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do not look to those who have more than you. Rather look at those who have less than you. Because if you look at those who have more than you, that will make you diminish the blessings of Allah upon you. And in these times, we have to appreciate the tiniest of blessings. My brother, if you have been guided to Al-Islam, do shukr to Allah. My brother, if you have eyes, do shukr to Allah. If you have ears with which you can hear and a tongue with which you can speak and a mind with which you can think, then do shukr to Allah. And from doing shukr to Allah Jalla wa ala, and being grateful for his blessings is that we don't use the blessings of Allah that he has bestowed upon us to disobey him. We don't use those eyes to look at that which is haram and those ears to listen to that which is haram. We don't use that money that he has blessed us with. We don't use it to disobey him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, we have to remind our sisters, our sisters, you are living in a time where there is an ideological attack on you. Feminism is being thrust down your throats. And feminism teaches you to not be grateful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. As a woman, the position which Allah Jalla wa ala has raised you and elevated you to. If you think that there is a system better than Islam, or there is something that is missing from the position of the woman in Islam, then you have not been grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I say to my brothers and my sisters on this point, many of us, we look at our lives and then we compare our lives to what we see on Instagram and what we see on social media. And we think, I don't have anything. Whereas somebody looks at us and he says, this person is living my dream life. Your life, my brother, my sister, is somebody's dream life. And so why are we not giving shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is that first state. That when he has a blessing, he makes shukr. He is thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I invite you, my brother, my sister, to sit down by yourself one time. Later on this evening, sit down and just reflect upon the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And every single blessing that you can think about, just say alhamdulillah as you go along. Alhamdulillah for this. Alhamdulillah for that. And this will make us see truly how blessed we are by our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And truly how kind he has been. How generous he has been. So that's the first state, my brother. Whenever you come across a blessing, a blessing of a child, give shukr to Allah because there's somebody who can't have children or hasn't had children. The blessing of a spouse, of a wife, as a husband. Because there's people who are looking to get married and they can't get married. You have a job, people can't get a job. You have good health and you have walked where you needed to go. Some people don't have that ability. So constantly be making the gratitude and the shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, my brothers, is that when he is tested and when you are tested, then sabr. He has patience. And how important is the station of patience? This station, my brothers, patience. Some of us, we believe that we have the right to an easy life and a life free of, pay, uh, free of trials and free of calamities and free of difficulties. 
There is nobody here except that he is going through something that requires from him sabr, patience. And the definition of sabr is that it's not something easy. Sabr is something that you have to, it's sour sometimes. You have to bear, you have to grit your teeth and you just have to keep going. Some of our brothers, they think that I've said la ilaha illallah, why am I facing calamities? Why am I facing difficulties? Why is Allah testing me even though I pray five times a day and I'm good to my parents and I, uh, I give the charity? Why is Allah Jalla wa ala testing me? Allah Jalla wa ala answers this very point. Do the people think that they're going to be left to say we believe and then they're not going to be tried? Then they're not going to be tested. Allah says, we tested those who came before them. And Allah will make it known those who are truthful from those who are the liars. So my dear brother, my dear sister, you may be doing everything, yet you will face trials and you will face difficulties and you will face calamities. Allah says, we're going to certainly test you. From something of fear and ho of, of fear and hunger and thirst and loss in yourselves and in your families, in your wealth. And then Allah says, and give glad tidings to the patient. Those people who when a calamity comes to them, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Why is it that those people are different to the rest of us? Those people who when, patient, when a difficulty comes upon them, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say, we've come from Allah, this is from Allah, and we're going to return back to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are those people special? Why are those people, those who have patience? Because my brothers, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, patience is at the time of the calamity or at the striking of the calamity. When the situation is the most difficult, that's when we have to have sabr. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ, he came upon a woman and she was mourning the death of her child, the death of her son. And the Messenger والسلام, he encouraged her to have patience. It was then that she didn't know who he was ﷺ. So she responded in a way that wasn't correct. And she said, you don't know my loss. You don't know what I'm going through. How can you say this? And the Prophet ﷺ left. Then the Sahaba, the rest of them, they reprimanded her and said, do you know that that is the messenger of Allah who said that to you? So she came running to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, oh messenger of Allah, I will have patience. I will have patience. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ said, patience is at the point of the calamity. Patience is when that calamity strikes, when it's most difficult, when you found out what's going on, you found out you have an illness, you've lost your job, your marriage is in tatters, you, whatever it is, you've experienced some loss, the death of a loved one, whatever it may be. Patience is at that point. Patience doesn't mean you can't cry. Patience doesn't mean you can't feel pain. Patience doesn't mean that it's got to be easy. Patience means that you simply, when it happens, you say Alhamdulillah, you don't say something which is displeasing to Allah and you bear it and you deal with it and you shoulder that burden, hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my brothers, these trials, they are an expiation of our sins. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if Allah intends good for the servant, then he brings on the, the punishment for him in this world. If Allah intends good for you, then he will punish you for your sins in this world. And if Allah intends bad for a servant, then he withholds the punishment of his sins until he comes on the day of resurrection. And so isn't it better, my brothers, that these things, these shortcomings and sins that we have, isn't it better that we pay for them in this life 
then we pay for them on Yawm Al Qiyamah. Isn't it better? Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that no pain or suffering or worry or grief afflicts a Muslim, even if it is the pricking of a thorn, except that Allah expiates some of his sins by means of that. And in reality, Ikhwani Fillah, many of us, we are simply tasting the evil Results of our own actions. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ No calamity strikes you except that it's because of what your own hands have earned and yet Allah forgives much. If we truly reflect on our own situation, the problems that we're facing is because of our own sins. We put ourselves into those difficult situations as a result of our sins. And so subhanallah, this takes us on to the third state. And that is that when the slave, he commits a sin, he makes tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my dear brother, my dear sister, you are more knowing of yourself than anybody else from amongst the people. Don't let the praise of the people make you ignorant of your own reality. You know what your soul whispers to you when you're alone. You know the things that you do when you're alone. And so you are more knowing of your sins than anyone else from amongst the people. And that's why we are in such need for constantly turning back and making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remind you that the one who sins and then he repents is like the one who did not sin at all in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Provided that we can fulfill the conditions of tawbah, and we have all of them fulfilled, then the one who sins but then makes tawbah is like the one who did not sin at all. And this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ikhwani fillah, the first condition of making that tawbah is that we stop the sin. It is not, it's disrespectful and it's not from the etiquettes of tawbah that we're sinning and while we're sinning, we're doing the sin, we're asking Allah, oh Allah forgive me, yet we persist in the sin. So the first thing is we have to stop the sin. And we have to close the doors to that sin. Important, my brothers. We close the doors to that sin. What does that mean? If you know that your mobile device, when you're alone and you're going to do something on that mobile device, which is a sin and displeasing to Allah. When you are alone, don't take that mobile device with you. This is from closing the doors. But then, if the situation has reached a level of addiction and you can't stop yourself, then we have to close the doors. We have to get rid of the mobile device. Because sinning, my brothers, is ruining our lives. And so we have to close the doors to the sin, put up barriers to keep ourselves away. Imagine there's a cliff and we don't want to fall off that cliff. We're not just going to not put any signs. We're going to put barriers up to prevent ourselves from dropping off that cliff. And so we stop the sin and we close the doors that lead to that sin. We feel an immense amount of regret. An immense amount of regret. Some of us, we look at haram, we listen to haram, we say haram, and we say, you know what? It's a minor sin. It's okay. It's a minor sin. It's okay. Or it's not from the destructive sins, the sab' al mubiqat, the seven destructive It's not sihar and it's not murder and I'm not, you know, accusing chaste women and it's not shirk. Inshallah, I'll be okay. It's not riba, etc. But this is the wrong attitude, my brothers. And persisting in minor sins turns them into major sins. Persisting in minor sins, it turns them 
into major sins. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us about a people who will come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and they are believers. They have fasting and sadaqah and charity and everything. They have everything. Mountains of good deeds. Yet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will turn those mountains of good deeds. They will become like particles of dust in the wind. Just get carried away. There's no weight to them. Why? Because when they were alone, they transgressed and they went beyond the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not once, not twice, but on a regular basis. This was their thing. When I get alone, I am going to disregard the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they are in the darkness, they forget about the one who created the darkness subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is a scary hadith. That they have so many good deeds, yet they become like particles of dust in the wind. Why, O Messenger of Allah, they are a people who when they were alone, they transgressed the sacred limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my brothers, we are in need of tawbah. Because our sins, they remove barakah from our lives. Our sins, they are the cause between a husband and wife being divorced. Our sins, they reduce our rizq. Perhaps our sin, it came between us and some rizq which was written for us. Our sins, they cause alienation between us and our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our sins, they cause alienation between us and our people. Our sins, they put a darkness on our face. Our sins, they will lead to our destruction in the akhirah. But the one who sins, and then he makes tawbah, he is like the one who never sinned. So, the conditions of repentance. Number one, you give up the sin. Number two, you feel immense regret. Number three, you ask Allah to forgive you. Number four, you make a firm intention that I'm never going to go back to that sin. And importantly, number five. If that sin involved you taking the rights of the people or the rights of somebody, Allah will not forgive you until you return that person their right. And this is important, ikhwani fillah. And so we will go through three states. And every situation that we find ourselves in, it is one of these three states. It is either a blessing for which we have to do shukr and show gratitude to Allah and how many they are. Or it is a test which we have to be patient with and how many they are. Or, my brothers, it is a sin for which we have to repent and how many they are. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائل المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا. As we إخواني في الله we approach a year of the massacre and the genocide of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. I also want to point out that this is not the only place where Muslims are suffering and where Muslims are being killed. If we were to list all of our places. Our brothers and sisters in Africa, Somalia and other than that. Our brothers and sisters in China and other than that. Our brothers and sisters in, in Afghanistan and Iraq. And our brothers and sisters in so many different places all over the world. Kashmir and other than that. If we were to reflect on this and link it back to these three situations. My brother, just imagine their situation and then look at the luxury that me and you live in and the safety that me and you live in does this not require immense gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this not require that we sit down and we thank Allah jalla wa ala for those blessings that we take for granted every single day and they would only wish to have those things they have been snatched away from them and so we have to give shukr when we remember and we make dua for our brothers and sisters all over the world. Next, ikhwani fillah. A patient, a, 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 a calamity that they 
are being patient on. And maybe our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is not testing us the way that he's testing them because he knows we're not strong enough to deal with that. We are not strong enough to deal with that calamity. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't tested us. But this is also a test for us. How will we be with regards to our brothers and our sisters? Will we assist them as we can? Will we make dua for them? Or will we just scroll through our news feeds and see what we see and yet we continue and we just forget about them? And so they have that right upon us. And finally, ikhwani fillah, our sins, our sins, they affect the ummah. We are all a reflection and a part of this ummah. But our sins... They, ref they have an effect and an impact on the Muslim nation as a whole. When the Muslim Ummah comes back to the Book of Allah, comes back to the way and the teachings of the Prophet wasallam, then Allah will give this Ummah honor and izza once again. But for as long as we keep turning away, then the enemies of Allah and His Messenger, they will continue to afflict humiliation upon us. So in these days, as all days, if you have a blessing, make sure you are grateful. If you have a test, make sure you have sabr. And if you commit a sin, make sure that you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In ending, we ask our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala on this blessed day, at this blessed time, that he eases the situation for the Muslims wherever they are. Those of them who are being killed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them martyrdom and accept their martyrdom. Those who are ill and have been injured, may Allah jalla wa ala return them back to full health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our youth and our elders and our leaders and rulers back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bring honor and izza to Al-Islam once again. And may Allah not take our souls until the last of our words is La ilaha illallah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Establish the prayer. Rahmakumullah.